Hello everypony, I'm Prime 217 and just recently I saw My Little Pony the Movie. Being a brony and thus a big fan of the show, the film is based off of, and having done two reviews of the MLB Equestria Girl spin-off films, I find it only appropriate that I give this film a review and let those of you who still care about my content know what I thought of it. I might later on decide to do a proper review with full footage from the film, but for now I'm just going to keep things simple. Sad to say, unfortunately, this film is a disappointment. The film's biggest problem is that there are too many characters and simply not enough story to go around. Thus, in order to give all the characters a fair amount of screen time, the film has to keep jumping from character and location in order to do this. As a result, we don't really get to know any of them well enough or how their sections of this world work. This unfortunately also makes some of the characters look rather bad, the sea ponies especially. Had the film spent more time with them, we could have gotten to know them more and sympathise with their motives, yet because we spend so little time among them, the only two we actually get any characterization of at all come across as lazy, uncaring, and utterly obnoxious. It also makes story progression rather awkward. For example, midway through the film, our heroes encounter a crew of pirates that have been forced by the film's villain to be a delivery crew instead. Then after a rallying musical number, they decide to abandon their forced new profession and become pirates again. This is meant to be an awesome and inspired moment, yet we literally just met these characters and they've suddenly got their mojo back before I've had any time to feel bad that they've been reduced to such a demeaning profession. Sadly and rather painfully, this also affects the villains in a very, very bad way. Of the three who have any prominence, Tempest Shadow, voiced by Emily Blunt, is the only one on whom the writers attempt to give any depth and layers at all. But unfortunately, what we get is too little and basically summed up in the film's villain song. And meanwhile, she spends a good deal of the film being an evil jerk and spouting off some painfully cliched emo villain lines. There were questions I raised about her, but as I said, any answers we are given are too little and leave me longing for more context. Trailing alongside her is the useless sidekick Rubber, voiced by Michael Peña, and when I say useless, I mean that in every, every sense of the word. Grubber does absolutely nothing in the film that in any way justifies his obnoxious presence, and all he does is say stupid things with an obnoxious lisp and eat cake. Then we have the film's main villain, the Storm King, voiced by Liv Schreiber. Initially, during production, when I heard about this villain, I was frustrated that he'd be a ripoff of T-Rex, a seemingly similar villain from the cartoon. But alas, I now wish that the Storm King was a T-Rex ripoff. The Storm King in the movie is a complete and utter buffoon of a villain who throws his weight around like a high school jock who's too stupid to do basic math and is absolutely nothing of any importance, not even bothering to actually show up until the third act, and for a grand total of maybe the 11 minutes of screen time he has altogether, he does nothing but act like an idiot. The only reason he comes across as at all threatening is when he's in possession of a magical staff that may as well be a deus ex machina. But how do the heroes of our story fare? Unfortunately, they also suffer as a result of there being so many characters. Twilight Sparkle is really the only one given any real personal conflict in the story, meanwhile her friends and dragon assistant Spike do little more than just tag along in her adventure and be annoying. Rarity almost has a moment which is actually somewhat crucial to the plot or at least one character's development, but the character she's connected to could be cut off completely and the story wouldn't change, thus making her useless. Rainbow Dash doesn't really do anything significant except stupidly let the villains know exactly where to find the heroes at one point. As for Fluttershy, Applejack, and Spike, they contribute absolutely nothing. They can be cut out of the film completely, and the film would remain exactly the same. But by far and large, Pinkie Pie is the absolute worst. Throughout the entire story, all she does is make stupid jokes and even at times gets the other characters into trouble, like how they're running for their lives across a rope and she stupidly decides to hop across it because she doesn't care, causing the rope to fall and Pinky herself to almost plummet to her death before Twilight has to go back and save her. And just before that, Pinky yells out into a crowd of bloodthirsty criminals that they're looking for someone even though Twilight just told her not to do anything like that. More than once, Twilight has a moment where one of her friends has screwed up and hindered their progression, and she's almost about to tell them off for being so stupid. Really, once the adventure starts, she's the only one who actually seems to be thinking straight. I was so certain that at some point Twilight would be so fed up with Pinkie Pie's antics that she would completely explode at Pinkie, telling her off about how useless and annoying she's been. And while that does sort of happen, the writers actually had the nerve to not only start this incident with Pinky telling off Twilight, but then to have her say such things as, No, because you didn't trust your friends. 
despite the fact that said friends literally gave Twilight no reason at all to trust any of them. I am so sorry, but I was completely on Twilight's side throughout the whole scene and it really made me mad and took me out of the film when the whole thing attempted to paint Twilight as though she was completely in the wrong. This is parental guidance levels of bad. You don't spend the majority of a story up to that point giving one character all the reason for the audience to side with said character against another, only to turn around and say that this character was wrong without anything solid to actually back it up. I really hate how the shoving of so many new characters results in a very forced, very badly handled attempt to give the heroes some internal conflict just to make them stand out from the 200 other main characters of the film to try and preach a film's message. So, was there any character I liked at all? Why? Yes, actually. Cap of the Cat, voiced by Tay Diggs, is the very best thing this film has to offer, hands down, no questions asked. Even when he seems to have lost control over the situation, he still manages to carry himself with style, class, and confidence. At one point he picks up Spike and actually uses him as a flamethrower to battle the bad guys. Every scene he was in I couldn't help but smile. He was that much fun and I sincerely want him to get his own movie. Any other characters, sadly, are purely incidental. If you don't know anything about them, then it won't hurt the film if you forget them or if the film didn't even include them. The animation, meanwhile, is a rather mixed bag for me. On the one hand, I kind of like how the Toon Boom makes it look like traditional animation instead of the flash that the cartoon uses, but more often than not, a lot of backgrounds are CG models and it looks rather painfully obvious. Speaking of CG, all the airships in the film are completely CGI, and they just look awful. Having seen what kind of airships people on the internet have created just for fun, it really boggles my mind how these unfinished things actually got through. Meanwhile, the movements for the animated characters seem to be good on the most part, but there are a lot of instances where the ponies' movements are slower, yet they're still going all over the place, making it look very awkward, and the slower, more emotional scenes seem rather hollow as a result. As for the redesigns, and by that I mean how the ponies' designs were altered slightly in transitioning to this animation, I don't really like them. I'm not really sure what they did, but perhaps in an attempt to make them look cuter, their muzzles have become smaller, looking very awkward when right beneath their massive eyes. I can't quite place it, but something about their eyes just doesn't look right a lot of the time. Kind of glassy and lifeless. However, my issues with the animation are actually quite small, though that may be because I saw the film in 480p resolution, and that made it harder to focus on the small things. As for the music, the orchestral stuff is okay, but unremarkable. It's no Steve Jablonski's score, I can tell you that much. The songs, meanwhile, are rather dull and frustrating. Every character number has the song's title forced into the chorus, and the song title are so tacky it pretty much ruins the experience. They're not bad, per se, but very immature. This disappoints me as the songs in the show tend to feel so much more organic and worthy of listening to out of context, yet these just try and really fail. A few pop songs also show up, including a version of We Got The Beats with the words Ponies and Equestria thrown in just because it's a pony movie. The song Rainbow by Sia isn't anything too special, though it's extremely frustrating how so much emphasis was put on marketing Sia's pony Sona only to have it be in no way relevant to the plot and narrative at all. And then there's Lucas Graham's Off to See the World, which is okay, honestly. A bit catchy, but again, it's really nothing special. I seriously believe that Lord Licorice's villain song from the Candyland movie was better than most of these tracks. I did, however, quite enjoy Kappa's song, A Friend You Need. It has the most fun visuals, the smoothest lyrics, and Tay Diggs seems to be so invested in the role that I almost want to sing along with him. There's such a low-key but lively energy to it that I actually rewatched it on YouTube. Huh. What do you think it says about DHX in the film when its best character is a con artist and its best song in story is meant to lead characters astray? Food for thought. In conclusion, My Little Pony the Movie has about the same quality as one of those obscure, forgotten animated films you'd find randomly in a Netflix category. Weak story, weak characters, pointless celebrity cameos, forced character conflicts, a basic and rather ham-fisted moral, mostly unremarkable music, and animation that doesn't hurt to look at if you don't pay attention to it. I'm really sorry, people, but this is a kid's film, straight and narrow. It was made for kids without any adults in mind. Kids may love it. But this is certainly not a film for adults, as opposed to the cartoon, which on its own merits and quality was able to amass a massive following of adult men as well as children. This isn't a film so much as it is a cash grab to bank on the show's popularity, if you couldn't already tell from the merchandise and unnecessary overhaul of celebrity voice actors. My Little Pony the Movie is the type of film you rent for your kids when you're not looking for anything in particular, if you just want to sit them in front of the TV for half an hour while you work or nap or whatever. It's nothing special, it's nothing unique. If you're not a fan of the show, you'll most likely be annoyed, bored, or just confused. But if you are a fan of the show, then at the very least you'll probably get a kick out of seeing your favourite characters on the big screen and enjoy a bit of world building that expands the world of My Little Pony. 
I didn't enjoy this film. I don't think it's very good at all. It has its good moments, and I laugh more than once, but sadly, this is a film that I can turn away from and never look back on without any regrets. As a brony and a big fan of the cartoon, this film just disappoints me.